The space industry is booming once again thanks to Elon Musk and SpaceX. Many people have been high on Elon for quite some time, but what do the people who take on all the risk think of SpaceX's CEO? Buzz Aldrin, the former astronaut most famously known as the second person to walk on the moon, has had some interesting thoughts on SpaceX over the years. At first, Buzz was, like most people at the time, a staunch critic of Elon Musk and SpaceX. Of course, since then, the inspiration for Buzz Lightyear's name has become one of SpaceX his biggest supporters. In response to Falcon 9's 100th flight, Buzz tweeted, Well done again, SpaceX, on a successful mission. You're starting to make it look easy, which we know it never is. Don't forget, my friends, space is a risky business, but it is worth the rewards. Hats off to Elon Musk for taking the risks to propel us into the future. The tweet has since been deleted, but the sentiment remains. Buzz has certainly warmed up to the idea of Elon leading humanity to Mars. The same applies to Aldrin's colleagues from the Apollo missions like Gene Cernan. After tearing Elon Musk and his ambitions apart in what could only be described as a verbal assault, Gene and a few other astronauts from the Apollo missions came together to give Elon Musk a heartfelt gift, a signed picture of a Falcon 9 with good wishes from the Apollo team. Buzz Aldrin's tribute read, And now a giant leap for commercial space. Gene Cernan wrote, Congratulations on a job well done. Now the challenge begins. In May 2020, NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley became the first people to launch into space on a SpaceX-built capsule and rocket. Speaking from the International Space Station, Behnken told CNBC, The ride, I'll say, was a bit smoother than our shuttle experience. The shuttle was a little bit rougher, at least at the beginning. Behnken and Doug's launch on Saturday, the 31st of May, marked the first time that SpaceX had sent humans into orbit. They joined fellow NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy on the space station, where Cassidy rang the NASDAQ stock market opening bell the following Tuesday to celebrate the launch's success. Both Bob and Doug have spent many years training with SpaceX in preparation for the launch. They had both been to space too, launching twice on shuttle missions before the program ended in 2011. Doug told CNBC, For me personally, it's a great way to fly your third time in space after a nine-year wait to fly previously. According to Bob Behnken, their experience working with SpaceX was pretty extensive as they had helped the company finish developing and testing the spacecraft for flight. Behnken also said that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk was involved in quite a bit of the development process, going as far to give him credit for helping build the Crew Dragon spacecraft. Many of the topics we would discuss would then be percolated up through the organization, and he would give the final approval on many of the aspects of things that we were trying to get developed, Behnken said. SpaceX designed the Crew Dragon to be fully autonomous without requiring manual inputs from the astronauts on board, but Crew Dragons have the ability to manually dock with the space station if necessary, and there are buttons to command a launch abort, initiate a deorbit and re-entry, and deploy parachutes if needed. Hurley said if there are any system failures or other issues, we'd like to know with confidence that if we take over manually, the vehicle will do what we need it to do. Hurley also had something to say about how surprisingly gentle the Dragon's automatic docking with the space station felt. The thing that really stood out to both of us, and we mentioned it as soon as we docked, is that we didn't feel the docking. It was just so smooth, and then we were docked. In the shuttle, you felt a little bit of a jolt. Nothing really heavy, but you felt it. The two astronauts also had positive reviews for their pressure suits, which were made by SpaceX. They wore them during launching and docking and put them on once again for their return to Earth, which happened two months later in August 2020. Hurley pointed out that the suits were custom designed and custom fitted, which made them very comfortable. Both astronauts said that taking off the suits and putting them on in space without the effect of gravity was much easier than on Earth. Behnken added that they had to give the suits a five-star rating. Each suit is point designed for a specific mission. This one is designed for us to sit in our seats and protect us if there's a fire or any sort of problem with the atmosphere on board Dragon, if it's leaking out, has smoke in it, or anything like that. Hurley was glad the suits didn't have to do anything extreme during the mission, but it was clear that they were ready. The duo returned to Earth on August 3, 2020 to conclude what had been a milestone mission for SpaceX and NASA. As their Crew Dragon entered Earth's atmosphere, heat was building up outside the capsule, engulfing the spacecraft in flames that quickly charred the white exterior and clouded the windows. But inside the capsule, Behnken and Hurley were calm and comfortable during what they described as a flawless mission. Behnken said, The atmosphere starts to make noise. You can hear that rumble outside the vehicle. And as the vehicle tries to control, you feel a little bit of a shimmy in your body. Even so, the pair were really, really comfortable coming through the atmosphere, even though according to Behnken, it felt like they were inside of an animal. The Dragon landed safely in the water, where recovery crews swarmed the vehicle to make sure its occupants were safe. Soon, they were back home in Houston, ready to resume life on Earth as husbands and fathers. Of course, since Bob and Doug's spaceflight, SpaceX has been on a roll. 
sending payloads and humans to orbit at an unprecedented rate. In November 2021, a SpaceX rocket carried four astronauts into orbit, including the 600th person to reach space in 60 years. The Dragon spaceship named Endurance docked with the ISS a day after liftoff. Shortly after the spacecraft had reached orbit, the mission commander Raja Chari said, It was a great ride, better than we imagined. NASA Chief Bill Nelson was present for the launch, and after the rocket took off, Nelson commended the NASA-SpaceX partnership, saying, We're seeing the power of American ingenuity right before our eyes. Godspeed, Crew 3. I can't wait to see all that you accomplish. NASA Associate Administrator and former astronaut Bob Cabana described the launch as fantastic. He also said, I think it's an amazing time for America's space program. We are definitely at an inflection point. According to NASA, Germany's Matthias Maurer claimed the historic 600th position based on his mission assignment. Matthias and his three NASA crewmates will arrive at the space station well over a week late, following multiple delays. According to Chari, trying to launch on Halloween left them with a trick instead of a treat. It was also drizzling on launch day when the four astronauts said goodbye to their families for six months, but it had cleared up by launch time. The illustrious list of 600 space travelers ranges from those who have barely been to space, like actor William Shatner, to U.S. and Russian astronauts who have spent a year or more in orbit. That comes down to 10 people per year on average since Soviet astronaut Yuri Gagarin's pioneering flight in 1961. Commenting on the state of space flights, Maurer said, I think in very few years we will see an exponential rise of that average figure, because we're now entering the era of commercial space flight. This crew launch marked SpaceX's fourth flight for NASA and the company's fifth passenger flight overall, including a September charter flight for four that skipped the space station. Following this mission, SpaceX has launched a mind-bending 18 people into space in just 18 months. For a company that first sent humans to space less than two years ago, that is no small feat. As cool and efficient as Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon are, it is undeniable that Starship, which is currently under development, is SpaceX's main attraction. Chris Hadfield, a Canadian astronaut and a veteran of three space flights, is just as high on Starship as we are. Replying to a successful Starship test flight in May 2021, Hadfield tweeted, 10,000 years of innovation in 38 seconds. I look forward to seeing this machine take us to orbit and beyond. Just a few months earlier, Hadfield was pleasantly surprised by SpaceX's move to buy and repurpose oil rigs for rocket launches. The astronaut tweeted, The audaciousness of using old oil rigs to launch and land interplanetary spaceships thrills me. SpaceX bought two deep water oil rigs in 2020, converting them into floating launch pads at the beginning of 2021. The rigs were renamed Deimos and Phobos, most likely as an homage to the Martian moons. The whole idea behind buying and repurposing the oil rigs was to support the giant Starship rockets that are now the company's primary focus. In 2020, Elon explained in a tweet that SpaceX plans to build floating, Super heavy class spaceports for Mars, the Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. When Elon's Starship fleet is finally operational, he could render us all speechless pretty soon. And we can't wait to see what astronauts will have to say about riding in the stainless steel giant that is Starship. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, welcome to the future.